Um, I asked Jorgen because he is the one who actually indicates and represents the FCI at the, the European Union. And that's his responsibility. So I asked him to give me a little bit of background as to how he was interacting with them and what was happening. So here's a quick little overview of what he sent me. Uh, I think some of you might be aware that uh, we use a PR company called Kellen who interact in, within the European Union and they give us whatever information, things that are coming through the various commissions so that at least we're pre-warned and we get an opportunity to address them before they come to uh, final stages. So that's really who Jorgen in, gets involved with directly. Um, they sh things that are coming up relating to dogs that have been misinterpreted, misrepresented, it gets a chance to interact quickly there. Uh, regarding this, he had regular meetings with MPs and relevant commissioners and offices on items concerning the dog, dog world, sometimes on his own and sometimes with the Kellen representatives. Also involved in those were the Four Paws, Eurogroup and other welfare organisations. So it gives an opportunity to mix on a level with them and speak to legislators rather than come individually. Um, very often he presents our organization and what we do to MPs, European MPs, who in general have no real concept of what we as the FCI or we as kennel clubs do. They really don't have a concept of it and it's great to get the opportunity one-to-one -to, -one to do that. Um, he also did two years ago, they had a meeting, where they, an open meeting for 300 European MPs attended and some of their assistants as well. It was to give idea of what dogs actually do, what pedigree dogs are about, and it was very well attended also by welfare organisations and was an opportunity to present somewhat an attitude of what kennel clubs and what pedigree dog breeding is about. Um, on the various issues going through, the stray dog problem going through the EU has still no solution there, still no clear direction. The only things that we have at the moment is that uh, they have, once again, aspirational ideas, but no legislation to follow on. They pay full regard to the welfare requirements of the animals since they are sentient beings, and the EU animal welfare legislation covers a range of issues, including breeding, slaughter, scientific research, but still contains no provisions for stray animals. And I know in some countries that's a major problem, not so much for us, but for some countries, still no direction. Um, the one thing about that is they are calling on the commissions uh, who are dealing with the problem of stray animals to get structural funding so that they can put proper legislation in that could travel right across Europe. That's not just particular for one country, but give some direction in that respect. Um, on the welfare issues, there's a couple of things, and the main theme coming through there is prevention is better than cure. And the strategy and concept of animal health covers not only the absence of disease in animals, but also critical relationships between health of animals and their welfare. So the welfare and the health are issues that are very totally interacted, and it's important that they keep that in mind. Uh, the development of tools that can be used by member countries to cooperation and establishment of a level playing field for European producers and provisions in appropriate of information to customers and the public. It's important that people know what's going on, that there are clear legislation that's easily understood. And once again, as you know, the EU works very slowly and this is going through the various commissions. Who knows when they'll actually come to legislate on it. Um, in a matter of the relevance of strategy, uh, they have dealt the potential to improve the lives of animals through non-legislative means, including the empowerment of consumers to raising the public awareness of welfare and the possibilities for optimising and enforcing of existing animal welfare laws, incentives and included should all in involve all stakeholders. The commissions have said that they agree with a holistic approach in future work on the welfare of animals, and they emphasise that the simplification of EU legislative framework for the protection of animals can be a useful instrument for alleviating the administrative burden on operators, authorities, but must not lead to a decline in the standards of protection of animals or the lowering of ambitions to improve 
animal welfare in the EU. These are the main trusts going through. They also say it is important to establish a network of reference centres for animal welfare where appropriate to existing scientific and technical national resources. Support the holistic approach to animals that comes up a number of times to animal welfare by sharing knowledge with special emphasis on validation, harmonisation and updating of outcome based animal welfare indicators on a scientific basis. The sharing of knowledge, very important, what we're all talking about. Validation. There's no point unless these whatever reports or things are coming to are properly validated. That's important. And harmonization, agreement about everybody of a way forward. The, finally, they agreed to the Commission, the relevance of the Commission to children, young adults and the large in a public to raise awareness of respect from animals and to promote responsible ownership. Well, I know certainly Lithuanian Kennel Club have a big program on that. We have one in Ireland ourselves and it's something we all value that if you get the kids, you get the parents. If you want to get a message through, that's the best way to get it through the children. It's an international, internationally agreed policy. That's the important thing internationally agreed. There's no point in us all going our own way. That's what the EU should be doing, is put that together. For breeders, dog trainers, kennel management, husbandry, best practices, minimum standards, certified, cleared off, clear direction for everybody. This is what your legislators are supposed to do for us. Uh, regarding the EU and our dealings with the EU, we as a, as a community, and I mean that by kennel clubs and professional and dog breeders, people who dog breeders, they have basically very little knowledge of what we do. And they work purely and solely on lobbying. Whatever interested party lobbies the hardest, carries the most votes, will get the most attention. It's like the baby who cries the loudest will get fed first. Simple as that. That's the way they work. So, we unfortunately don't have a very strong lobby. More stronger would be agriculture, farming, horse industry, livestock, transporters, veterinary groups, animal welfare. We are way down the pecking order. We are not a big international lobbying group. We don't spend money on lobbying. As Tomas said earlier on, we don't have a PR department. We don't promote ourselves, so when it comes to influence these politicians, our voice is very, very weak. They don't understand us, and we're not spending enough effort and time to make them understand us. Our trouble is, and a number of the speakers said it already, society and society's perception of us, what we are and what we do as dog breeders, as kennel clubs. Society is a very different approach to us. They assume that we're either, at best, eccentrics, at worst, ego, to use dogs just to boost their own ego, and we're motivated a lot of time by either nice blue ribbons or money. And it's this concept, unfortunately, is fed by uh, animal welfare groups who say we breed unhealthy dogs just for our own ego or money, by veterinary groups who kind of play the same card as well and sometimes say that crossbreed dogs are more healthy, not necessarily proven, but they're just a generic statement. Usually ch crossbred dogs don't go to the vets that often. It's usually the pedigree dogs that go to the vets. So where would they get the statistics from? Out of the sky? Um, we have to work hard to change that attitude. We have to. Perception is reality. We have to change that. It's our job to work hard to change it. Um, various kennel clubs, my own included, and I know nearly every one of you, have your own hard work you're doing to try to present yourself to society in your own country. But there's no structure of sharing of information. There's no joint approach from anywhere. And really, it should be coming from the FCI. That's our mothership. That's the one we're all members. That's where we all go to. They should be coordinating all our efforts, trying to give it and develop it forward. As a matter of fact, I think we have a commission for so many things. You know it. You've seen the papers. Commission for everything. Some of them, I don't even know what they do. But they're commissions, and I'm not really clear what they actually do. But we as a group, as a society, our own society, we're indulging ourselves a bit. 
We have them for dog shows, we have them for dog judges, we have standards commission, we have scientific, we have hunting, we have agility, we have everything, but we have nothing for welfare. We don't have a commission for welfare, animal welfare. A big mistake. A big mistake for, because that should be, it says it at the start of everything we do. We're for the health of the dogs, health welfare, but we don't have a commission directly responsible for that. If we do that and keep indulging ourselves in our localised little thing that we do, we're going to divorce ourselves from society. So we have to be very careful and very aware how we promote ourselves. So, what's the message? What's the message we have that we want to give to society? The message is, first of all, we are aware. We are aware there are problems. We are aware there are health problems. We are aware that sometimes breeding creates health problems. Second message is, we care. We care. We do care. We want to help, we want to change it, and we want to do it. So that's very important. We must also promote and let people understand what breed-specific pedigree dogs mean as compared to the non-peds and the mutts that you get that they all talk about that are so healthy and so wonderful, and we are just egotists. Breed-specific dogs what have they got that the mongrels will never have? Predictable characteristics. Thomas thought about sizes and colors, and yes, they have all that. But they're specifically bred over generations, close breeding, line breeding, whatever it is, to have predictable characteristics. And does society benefit from that? Absolutely. You won't pick up a search and rescue dog in the pound. You could if you're lucky. One out of a thousand might just work out. You won't pick up at one that can scent out and find a body in the forest. And the, you won't get that. You won't get protecting, herding, retriever dogs, uh, autism assist, assist dogs for the blind. The reason society has these things and benefits from them is because we, as breeders and exhibitors over the years, we developed particular characteristics that serve humanity and serve society. That's the message we have. That's the positive message we have. That's the message we should be getting out there. We are not. We are not. We should be spending money on that. We should be doing, putting programs together to present that so people will understand us a little better and won't look, just look as, a, as indulging ourselves in what we do. We actually have a big value in what we breed to society. So, I said too much of that. <laughs> So the, the main thing about this message is to communicate and promote. And the big tool we have with that is the FCI. Educate. Communicate. And by doing that, hopefully, influence those who legislate. Educate. Communicate. Influence those who legislate. That's what we can have to do here. In this level, I think the FCI has a big role to play. They, they are our mother organization. We can all do our little bit in our own part of the world, but ultimately they are the ones who should show leadership, coordinate the efforts of the various member countries. All the, the, we're all doing something in our own way. They should be a coordinating body for all we're doing. And certainly, I agree with Thomas, we need a commission for public relations, very, very necessary, and also a commission for health and welfare. There's two new commissions who would, I would replace any of the ones we have already with those two. Any of them, even the ones that appear very important. If I had my way, as in a, if I was the boss of this whole thing, I would straight away replace any of the commissions with one of those two. Because they're the ones that are going to keep us relevant and drive us forward into the future. That's it.